Hey, Bulls and Bears, it's Friday, December 3rd, 2021. Thank you for being here. Debt collectors are going to be and are already in very high demand. We're going to talk about why that is. First, please make sure that you are subscribed and that you like this video and that you hit the notification bell. Because as we follow this economy and this financial situation, this storm that's headed our way, believe me, you do not want to miss an update or an episode. Now, first of all, before we get started, quick announcement. The person or people down in comments that are acting like they're me telling you to go to like WhatsApp and places like this to get stock tips or inside information, that is not me, okay? I've, I've said this before, but there's new people here. I'm not on, actually, I'm not on any other platforms. Right now, I'm just exclusively on YouTube. Uh, YouTube is the biggest audience, so this is uh, where I upload to. Yes, I post stuff on Twitter sometimes. Um, just due to time restraints, I'm actually not very active on any other platforms at all, uh, mainly YouTube. So anyone acting like they're me on different platforms, unless it's Twitter, uh, it's not me. All right, let's get into this. So it should be no secret that there's many jobs available right now. And on this channel over the past uh, year or so, we've kind of unraveled the reasons why so many people are choosing not to work. Uh, some of them are obvious. You have the health crisis. And you also have just many jobs out there that just simply do not pay enough to keep up with the rising cost of living. You would think that would push more people into just getting any sort of job. But there's a lot of people, a big portion of the population that's just choosing to sit on the sidelines. And what's the use if you're just going to work and just spend all your money on bills. And we know that most millennials now of the younger age are living at home still. And uh, with home ownership being just a pipe dream for so many of these younger people, new graduates just loaded up on all kinds of debt. Uh, it's impossible for many of them to even thinking about starting a family or buying a home. So we see more jobs like this, collection agents, you're working in a call center essentially making outbound calls. And we scroll through the listings here. We see one here, ZipRecruiter. Uh, you can make twenty-seven to 41000 a year as a debt collector. Okay. Now, that particular field is going to be one that's going to be uh, in even bigger demand than it already is. And new powers now are given to debt collectors because I think of because what's coming. Please let me know what you think about this. Now, we covered this back in the summer. The CF... PB confirmed a new rule that took effect here just recently, but back in July it was actually passed. They announced new rules for debt collectors and they have taken effect and they would extend the capabilities of these debt collectors. And this is out of uh, NPR. Debt collectors can now text, email, and DM you on social media. All right now, first of all, if you have someone that's coming to collect a debt from you, um don't friend them on social media that's one tip i can give everyone now these new rules they actually do set some limitations on debt collectors for example debt collectors who contact you on social media they have to identify themselves as debt collectors but can attempt to join your network by sending you a friend request so you're gonna know who it is because they have to identify themselves if they're following the rules um of course are you going to accept them as a friend and if you are, do you want the debt collector looking at everything that you're doing? If you post on social media and you owe money, do you really want to be posting all the things that you're spending and wasting money on? Do you want to be posting a selfie at the football game, at the amusement park, uh, out drinking with your friends? Who knows, right? And, uh, you know, they know that you owe them money, but you're out spending money. How much is a drink now at a nightclub or a bar? Is it... Uh, a mixed drink is it ten dollars now uh anyways you get my point uh this is pretty insane to have debt collectors try to contact you on social media and what kind of people are going to friend the debt collector and then let them look at all the things that they're doing a uh, pretty crazy story but uh, please let me know what you think about this down in the comments all right also i think this is going to open up a lot of different types of uh you know bad people people that probably aren't even debt collectors acting like they're debt collectors and they're going to be coming at you on social media. Uh, but again, who's going to accept this type of friend request? Uh, hopefully nobody, but you never know. 
All right, or again, maybe you're gonna do it, accept the friend request just to taunt them and show them all the money uh, that you're wasting. All right, maybe you can post a picture at the casino, uh, you're gambling your money, but yet you can't pay your minimum credit card payment. Well, speaking of being in debt and uh, having collectors come after you, let's talk about this. Recent story here out of MarketWatch, I'm 65 and can't retire because I have 80K in student loans, $80,000 in loans. How can I get out of this debt faster? 65 years old, you should be enjoying your life right now at that point and not having to worry about paying back $80,000 in student loans. All right, and here's a scary statistic. This is Market Watch, by the way. Roughly 9 million Americans age 50 or older have student loan debt. All right, let me ask you a question, and please let me know what you think about this. When do we as consumers, as people that have a choice on what we spend our money on, and yes, going into debt for, for education is a choice that you're spending money on, but you're getting, you're getting a loan and you're responsible for the debt. Um, when do we accept responsibility and say enough is enough? The price, the cost of education no longer is worth it. Yes, in some cases it can be worth it. And there are many people out there that make more, way more money by having a degree than not. But when you see statistics like this, 9 million Americans 50 years or older still have student loan debt. A 65-year-old with $80,000 in student loan debt. You have to start asking the question, um, is it more advantageous to think twice about this and maybe get an occupation where you can just do on-the-job training, maybe some sort of skilled labor job? Right, I've read about plumbers that make six figures and you don't have to go into a bunch of college loan debt uh, to become a plumber. And there's lots of skilled trades that are very similar, uh, but people want to have an easy office job. They want to be the next CEO that's making 30 million a year and even more in some cases. And uh, speaking of that, there was a story that came out a few months back. Jamie Dimon's taking a lower salary down from his $31 million. Uh, poor guy. A poor guy. I'm just, my heart goes out to him. Uh, but yeah, people want to be the next guy that sits in an office that's making millions of dollars instead of actually working hard, getting your hands dirty, and, and maybe working up a sweat every now and then. Uh, so is that the situation with these college loans and these people that are just choosing to go into endless amounts of debt to get a quote-unquote education and we have to ask the question, was it an education after all when you look at yourself at 65 and have $80,000 in student loans? And uh, I know some uneducated people, people without college degrees, uh, with no debt at 65. All right, and speaking of age 65 and retiring and uh, hopefully not being in debt, you know, when you retire, Someone sent this to me a few weeks ago, and I forgot to include that in our updates here. Retirees are unretiring, and that's good for the labor market. So are these people unretiring just because they're bored of sitting at home? Or are they having financial difficulties, and they're having a hard time keeping up with the rising cost of living? I think you know my um, opinion on that. I think that the rising cost of living is pushing a lot of retired people uh, back into the labor force. All right, and maybe there are some retired people that are bored and they want to uh, go ahead and work. They want to work at the grocery store or whatever it is they do. They want to be a greeter at a department store. Uh, and maybe that's true, but even if it wasn't true, uh, you know, I'm sure they wouldn't tell you. They would probably just tell you that they were bored without wanting to admit that uh, the, the cost of living is just uh, basically punishing them and pushing them back into the labor force. Uh, but it's all right. Hey, the money printers, you know, they say there's not enough inflation. Uh, we're going to keep interest rates low so prices can continue to climb. And uh, that's what happens when you have a controlled economy is you have, you know, a small group of people that get to make the decision, uh, many decisions that affect millions of people. Uh, but that's the world we live in. Um, continue to prepare people. Hope you're well. Stay safe. Keep stacking. Bye for now. See you next time. Peace.